Have you ever heard of three generations joining the church and all at the same time? Next, here on the Ex-Mormon Files. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you joining us. Last time we were introduced to Carmen Hayes, and uh, what a lovely story she had. And today we get to meet her husband, Russell Hayes. You've come, he's come all the way from Cuna, uh, Idaho, and fortunately we had good weather for this trip, right? It was perfect. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to do something a little different this time. Russell is going to basically just share his story, and uh, I'll interject or we'll interact as we need to. But uh, uh, one of the things that the Hayes's wanted to do was to make sure they shared their journey with uh, with family and friends. And so I think this is uh, this is their opportunity to do that. And so Russell, the time is yours. Thank you very much, Bishop, <laughs> for having me here. Um, <clears throat> To uh, tell you a little bit about uh, my family, uh, I was raised in Massachusetts. My parents are from Maine, but um, I was raised in Massachusetts. Uh, we had uh, um, fantastic missionaries that knocked on our door and uh, taught us the, uh, um, about Mormonism, the gospel of, of Jesus Christ according to Mormonism. And it ended up that um, <clears throat> I'm the oldest of eight kids. How old were you at this point? Um, well, at that point, when we started having the lessons, I was uh, baptismal age at that point. Okay. And, uh, um, but my family just fell in love with the missionaries uh, to the point where um, when my little brother was born, uh, my mom, I guess, was expecting at the time, she named my little brother after one of the missionaries that taught us. So it was absolutely wonderful. And when we talk about, uh, in the past I've met um, <clears throat> Mormons that have said that, oh, I come from four generations of Mormons and uh, five generations and stuff like this. Well, I say uh, I came from a Mormon family of three generations. The difference is we all joined together. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my grandmother was uh, uh, joined right around the same time we did and she, uh, was fantastic at genealogy, and uh, all of our family really jumped into uh, Mormonism. And uh, where I was raised back in Massachusetts, we were on our area there, the only Mormons. And uh, at that time, I guess I had the missionary spirit even then because my neighbor kids would say, well, we're Protestants. And I'd look at them saying, what are you protesting? <laughs> <laughs> and. Um, some were Catholics, uh, but um, at that time, you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier, sometimes that as Mormons we become arrogant, and we think we've got the whole truth, and so that kind of uh, became part of me. And uh, fortunately, <clears throat> I had the opportunity to serve a mission, and uh, I was... Uh, one of the, um, how do I put it, ambitious <laughs> Mormon missionaries. I wanted to convert the whole world. I, um, Where did uh, you go? Uh, oh, I, that's part of the story. Um, I got called at first to the uh, Western State Spanish Mission. And um, back then, we had the uh, LTM, which is the Language Training uh, Mission. The English-speaking missionaries would go just right out to their missions. Sure. And I know when you went, you had to go two and a half years. But when I went, it was um, uh, to the language training mission for two months. But while I was <clears throat> in the language training mission, they took uh, that mission and um, Western State Spanish mission and incorporated us into the English missions. And I was called to the uh, Oakland, California uh, mission as a specialty elder, because that's what we were back then, you know, there were, um, we covered from um, Lodi, California, down to Bakersfield, the whole Bay Area. So the mission that we covered even back then is many missions now. Wow. But um, when I first got there, there were uh, 22 of us covering the Spanish in uh, the central San Joaquin Valley. 
And um, <clears throat> a lot of times we ended up with, um, paired up with English companions. So we would speak Spanish and they would speak English. And um, everybody had the chance to see my beautiful wife. And a s story real quick about um, when I got transferred to the area that she was at uh, in Fresno, California, um, my companion and I walked into the Spanish branch and uh, it was crowded, uh, very packed, and so uh, we had to stand against the wall. I'm standing there against the wall and I'm looking around and I see this beautiful girl sitting in the back and it just came out of my mouth. I um, looked over at her and I said, she is gorgeous. Of course, my missionary companion <laughs> poked me in the uh, uh, ribs and says, Elder, you're not supposed to be looking. And I said, I can't help it, she's gorgeous. <laughs> So um, that was uh, Carmen. That was Carmen. Um, and uh, as you can, everybody can see, I married up. Um, at the time, um, as missionaries, we kind of start to focus in on the uh, families that feed us good food. And um, her older sister um, uh, would feed us missionaries you know, every time we'd show up. And uh, so we were there quite a bit. Um, and uh, at the time, um, Carmen was engaged uh, to a, uh, a young man. Uh, I guess he wasn't a Mormon, mm. but uh, she was very much an active Mormon. And uh, after my mission, I went home. My parents had moved um, uh, from Maine. Uh, to back up r real quick, I only lived in Maine for two years, my last two years of high school. and. Uh, so um, <clears throat> while I was on my mission, my, my parents moved, but I found them again. Uh, <laughs> um, they moved to West Virginia. And when I went back there, I just really missed California and the, the people that I'd gotten to meet there. So uh, I went back to California um, and stopped in to see uh, Carmen's older sister. And uh, Carmen's older sister says, well, she's moved in with the uh, brother uh, and sister um, Scott was their name, but anyway, she moved in there, and uh, so I says, oh, well, uh, can I have her telephone number? I called her up and, uh, and asked her out. Uh, when I got there, and uh, she opened up the door, and she looked at me, and she goes, oh, hello, Elder Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> and she called me Elder Hayes for probably the next couple of months. Kind of hard to change, change colors there, huh? Yeah. Um, but... Um, uh, we fell in love, and you, everybody can see why I fell in love with her. Um, in uh, June 26th, 1975, Carmen and I were married in the uh, Oakland Temple. And um, I remember at that time, because uh, Carmen's family uh, has lived in California for hundreds of years, uh, back when California belonged to Mexico. But all this time, um, I'm thinking, wow, I'm marrying a Lamanite. I'm marrying someone uh, from the Book of Mormon. And uh, that was uh, a wonderful thing. And, and uh, we had a uh, great marriage. And when she mentioned earlier that we moved around a lot, I had been a um, helicopter pilot in the Army. Oh. And um, when we got into the civilian world, uh, I was what they call a helicopter gypsy. You know, you go from contract to contract all over the place. So our kids were raised in um, <clears throat> different schools and towns, and we moved around quite a bit. But the anchoring thing that we had in every place we moved was the Mormon church. Sure. Because uh, we'd go there and, and start uh, um, that. What I wanted to mention, and if most people are honest about this, um, there are things in the Mormon church that we don't quite understand that we have a proverbial back shelf in our minds. Things that I didn't understand, I would put on my back shelf. Sure. And if you don't mind me talking about that right now, uh, one of the first things that went on my back shelf was the, uh, the missionary that baptized my family took me through the temple for the first time when I went on my mission. Uh, and back then, I guess it was that way when you went, the missionary went to, uh, through the temple 
one or two times before his mission. And then while you're on your mission, you don't get to go again. Right. Yeah, we were that way. Yeah. And uh, I just remember that when we uh, get back out to his car and we're driving away, I started to ask a question. And he said, time out, time out. We do not discuss anything that goes on in the temple outside of the temple. If you had a question, you should have asked me while we were in there. Yeah. And um, so I put that on my back shelf, which was um, the, uh, the blood atonement uh -huh. that um, I had to imitate that I was going to have my yeah before Yeah, before 1990, yeah. Yes. So um, <clears throat> um, that was put on my back shelf. And then the next thing that happened was uh, that went on my back shelf was, this is 1971, and uh, one of the families that we were teaching was at uh, Castle Air Force Base, um, this major uh, who was uh, African American. And um, he had a lovely family. He was a highly educated man, wonderful man. And uh, I think it was by the third or fourth lesson we were to challenge them to be baptized. And we were, at that point, we were going over there and we were thinking, okay, we're going to challenge him to uh, him and his family to be baptized. Well, apparently at work, his work, someone talked to him and said, you know, in the Mormon church, black people cannot get, cannot, black man cannot hold the priesthood and black families cannot get married in the temple. And so we walked in there. He took our coats, and, and he says, before we get started, he says, I have a question for you. Oh, boy. He says, is it true that if I and my family join the Mormon church, I cannot take my family to the temple, and I cannot hold the priesthood? It was like a punch in my gut. And I just kind of took the wind out of me, and I said, yeah, that's true. He politely stood up, handed us our coats back, and he said, uh, gentlemen, there will be no more lessons. And uh, I did not understand why blacks couldn't hold the priesthood. I put that on my back shelf. Yeah, huge shelf. <laughs> yes. Uh, just those two items was getting pretty way down even <laughs> then. Um, so um, over the years, things kept uh, building up. And um, I want to say that to my children right now that uh, there's a confusion uh, when I left that made them think um, uh, probably they thought it was crazy. But what happened was, is, uh, in Mormons, you know, you do your genealogy. And yeah. in my genealogy, I found that um, way back when I had uh, Jewish ancestors. And uh, so um, I uh, kind of got excited about that and uh, started looking up more about them. And I fell in love with Judaism. Hmm. And uh, while I was still a believing Mormon, I started studying with a rabbi. And um, I studied with him for a couple of years. And um, while still a Mormon, um, I converted to Judaism. And uh, wow. um, that's part of the story you didn't know about me. No, I didn't. <laughs> uh, so um, in my uh, conversion to uh, Judaism, I thought in my mind, well, okay, well, um, Jesus was, a, was Jewish. Yeah. Um, I can be a Mormon Jew. And uh, so, and I did that kind of uh, s secretly, if you will. Um, when, um, so I was in both. Well, what happened also as I was doing these things, um, in my study of Judaism, I've also fell in love with Abraham. And um, I would go on uh, YouTube and I was looking up all kinds of things about Abraham. And then I came across this um, uh, YouTube video and it said, The Lost Book of Abraham. And I said, The Book of Abraham's not lost. I've got it in my quad. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so the next thing that I did is, is I decided to watch The Lost Book of Abraham. And when I did, um, watch, when I watched The Lost Book of Abraham, it was like a house of cards. The, the book of Abraham is the smoking gun that shows that um, Mormonism is a man-made religion. And um, at that point, I became angry. Yeah. And That really hit you. 
it hit me and the the whole house of cards fell down because at the end of that um, video the narrator said if Joseph Smith lied about this and of course also the Kinderhook plates he said what else did he lie about and it just fell on me I said the Book of Mormon and uh, I started peeling that onion back going to everything I could on YouTube and uh, the internet and finding all of the things that all of us find. So the catalyst leading me out of Mormonism was the Book, Book of, of Abraham. Abraham. Now, one of the things I'm going to say is that everybody that looks into this will find that they may have different catalysts. With my wife, I think her catalyst was uh, um, polygamy. Hmm. Um, as she mentioned to you, she didn't understand how God could do that. But um, it all fell uh, apart at that point, and I started um, uh, telling her, come look at this, come look at this, you know, and this. And that's when she told me that story she told you. Stop. She said, stop. <laughs> I don't want to hear another word. Yeah. Um, she felt I was just looking at anti-Mormon literature. So um, uh, that's when, you know, she told you her story. She said, uh, all I said to her, what are you going to do, wait for God to himself to tell you? And she said, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> and um, then, as she mentioned in her uh, testimony there, she said that uh, she felt inspired to read the Bible. And my gosh, you saw her Bible. She started reading the Bible three, four times a day. She'd uh, go into her, you could tell. the thing and she's and making and all half, kinds of notes and, and um, really got into it. It was um, fantastic. Now, when I came out of the Mormon church, I came out angry. So what I'd like to do right now is uh, to tell my children and those that I've talked to, I apologize. Please forgive me for coming out so angry that um, my own brother said to me when I invited him to come by the house, he said, why, just so you can bash Joseph Smith again? And I really regret that. And I apologize to my brothers and my sisters and to my children. I am so sorry for coming out so angry. But the true joy that Carmen and I felt is in Jesus Christ. Um, I did not understand um, grace as a Mormon. And um, now I know, as Carmen witnessed to you, that all of the good deeds that we try to do mean nothing to Jesus. Um, all he wants us to do is to, um, through faith, accept him as our Savior. We are sinners. And through our faith in Jesus Christ, paying for our sins on the cross, that we can become saved. It's nothing more than that. It's Jesus, and Jesus did it all. And I want to tell you, my children, I love you dearly, but please um, read the Bible as your mother said, as a, as a young, as if you were a, a child. And there you'll find the true Jesus, the Jesus that truly saves us, our God. And uh, your mother and I have such joy now. When we go to um, our church that we belong to now, um, the worship music is so beautiful. But also I've got to tell you that there's no such thing as a true church. The true church is you and Jesus. Where you worship is where you are comfortable. Absolutely. Yeah, and um, uh, that's what I wanted to share with everybody. Uh, that's fantastic. You know, you just have a, a sense that when we learn this information and, and start falling in love with Jesus uh, that we never knew before and realizing it was His righteousness, that did it, not, not our righteousness. You just have this message you want to share. And I've had a lot of people say, well, why are you doing this? Because we've done this. But I say, well, why do we send out missionaries? Why does the church send out missionaries? Because they have a message and you feel like it's an important one. If I can also go back to the story. Sure. Um, when I um, came out angry, I was not a Christian yet. Um, at that point, I um, told my kids and everybody that I was just going to be Jewish. Oh. <laughs> and um, that's where my kids became confused. 
But what happened shortly after that, um, while doing my research, I found Dave Bartosowitz on the internet and his uh, um, YouTube channel. Um, have, have you experienced you, Jesus? Yeah. Have you experienced Jesus? Yeah. And so I had questions and I called him up. He invited me to his house and... Uh, now he's in northern Utah and you're in, over in Boise. Area. Yeah, and what, what happened was is Carmen um, said that she wanted me to drive her down to Education Week at BYU. She uh, was still active at Oh yeah, point. she was still very active. Yeah. So I drove um, Carmen and our youngest daughter um, to BYU, dropped them off there, and I was going to come back, uh, I guess, a week later, pick them up. But on my way home, I stopped in at uh, Dave Bartosowitz's house, and he sat down with me and um, pointed me to the scriptures that shows that we are saved by grace and not by works. And then he challenged me, um, after seeing the true Jesus, to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. So in his room, uh, in his living room, August uh, 18th <laughs> at 7.45 at night, uh, I said this, the prayer asking and inviting Jesus into my life as a sinner. And at that point, uh, I was saved <laughs> by his grace. And um, such joy came to my heart. And then Dave said something uh, wonderful to me. He says, there is no such thing as a true church. The true church is you and Jesus. And he says, where you worship now is where you're comfortable. And um, so I'm, uh, Carmen and I go to a very small church, uh, very conservative, and uh, we're very, very happy and very comfortable there. Now you were, one of the things that Carmen had kind of mentioned or hinted at is that she was upset, of course, at what you were throwing at her. But she wanted to find out for herself, right? Yes. Do you feel like she did that, or was she... Oh, definitely. And yeah. the, the time that, uh, you know, she wanted to do it all on her own. And um, by then, at this point, uh, when she says, I'm going to read the Bible, I thought in my mind, I've never read the Bible, you know, cover to cover. Really? Even as a missionary, we only quoted the, oh, no. the things that uh, yeah. had to do with those. Pluck out a few, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, so we're reading the Bible together every night in, in, in bed there, and that's the part when she got to that one place where um, she put her finger there and she said, you know, the Jesus here in the Bible is not the same Jesus of Mormonism. And at that point I said, hallelujah. And um, uh, there was no stopping Carmen at that point when she got so involved in the Bible, and uh, it was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, well, Russell, anything, I know you've, you've given a wonder, shared a wonderful part of your journey, and I'm sure there's much more and some even deeper things, but and your, to your family, I mean, I, I, I can tell you love them. We love Mormons, right? Yes. I mean, we, want, we have a heart for them. We want them. And that's why we do this show, is to be able to share this, uh, the joy, though, that comes when, when we understand who Jesus is and what he did for us. Yes. And that isn't it about what we can do, that, no. that we can never do enough. And, no. and he's done it all, and we should rest in that and trust. And then, is, as we, I mentioned with Carmen, there's just a great freedom, isn't there? It, and it the joy. certainly is. Yeah. Um, when Jesus said, uh, take up my yoke, for it is light and easy to bear, <laughs> yeah. I didn't believe that. But now that I know that Jesus paid for my sins already, Yeah. Uh, before I was born, that um, in the past when I was a Mormon, I did good works to try to earn my way to heaven. Absolutely. And now, the only reason that I do good works is to praise Jesus, to glorify Jesus. Jesus gets all the glory. And to those that watch this, uh, I don't know if I can emphasize enough the joy that you feel in Jesus. Um, it's... Um, undescribable, the joy, the love, uh, and everything. Come, jump in the water. Um, <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Well, there's a peace and a, 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 a yeah. A, a peace and a joy. Yeah. And that the Jesus that I know now is my, my, my God. He's my Lord, my Savior. Yeah. He's, he's my God, and he created everything. Well, Russell, thanks for coming. Appreciate you and Carmen coming down and sharing this journey with us, and uh, I hope it touches some hearts. Uh, 
um, because it's so joyful. And, you know, thanks a lot. Appreciate Thank it. You. We'll see you next time on the Ex-Mormon Files.